Uh, welcome to the Global Beehive and our expert interview. Today we have the pleasure of having Anders Engelund here and he's going to talk a little bit about IoT and machine learning. It's going to be a great interview to hear him talk about his field of expertise. Um, so first of all, Anders, welcome to this, um, this interview. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very happy to have you on board here, and we, we are very much looking forward to hearing your views on IoT, and especially what happened during the last year or so. So can you please give us a little bit of short introduction to yourself and to your area of expertise and a little bit about your experience in this area. Well, uh, my background uh, is uh, I studied computer science and uh, electronics uh, at Linköping University and Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio, and has been working with, uh, actually my field of my speciality was artificial intelligence already back then. Okay. So I've been working with that area all since mid eighties, but I've been working with product development and also about how to use software and IT in order to improve organizations and businesses uh, ever since that. And I've been doing that uh, in product development companies, in uh, consulting companies and companies using those softwares to achieving, building better product, to see, achieving better services to its customers, etc. And, and uh, the last 10 years I've been working at, as a CEO of Atemtech, uh, where we do uh, build Internet of Things solutions. And uh, uh, my role typically there is to, to uh, assist customers in finding the business value and how to use IoT in order to create that value. Thank you so much. It's a very interesting area of uh, business, uh, something, an area where so much has happened during the last couple of years, I guess. Yeah. What, what, is what, made, you, what made you get into that, into IoT specifically? I, I, I don't think it was a, a choice specifically. It's, it's more <laughs> of a natural, if you think about product development, I mean, we added uh, computers to our product and they became smarter and smarter. And then as telecommunications evolved, it was quite a natural path to start connecting those devices. And uh, you could, uh, I think the, the first uh, IoT connected device in Sweden was a Coke machine in, in Chista in the science center, uh, just because, and no one knew why it was used. It was just possible to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and nowadays we do it really to create better products, better services. So for me, it has been a natural way to follow the way product development has been, has been uh, evolving over time. Exactly. If you went back to 2020 now and, and look at you know, the recent development with the COVID and so on, has this amplified the need for IoT, do you think, or what has happened during this crisis? Well, I think it's in the short term, it has slowed the pace okay. uh, because companies are more careful with starting new investments, uh, mm -hmm. at least during these initial phases of, of COVID. But I also think that at the same time, we see that e-commerce, a uh, lot of uh, uh, platform, we use communication platforms, uh, not in real life meetings. And we realize that uh, digitalization or, or uh, that transition is really very useful in more areas that we maybe not were used to before. So I think in the long term, it will actually accelerate that development where we will use uh, uh, digital transformation where IoT is an important uh, uh, catalyst to, to really make that transition. Mm -hmm. So I think actually in the long run, in short run, short term, it has slowed down the pace and in the long run, it has actually accelerated the pace. Accelerated the pace. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you see as the greatest challenges? I mean, is this something, IoT in digitalization, obviously something that it started to become the top of mind of executives. Do you, do you see that as well? What, what do they talk about in this area? A lot of executives, they have, they have to become more di digitalized and yes. then they really don't know what it means. Uh, <laughs> so I think for some of them, it has, they have to understand how they can use it. Uh, and I think that the question they should pose themselves is what kind of uh, business value would we like to create, mm -hmm. how should we be able to create new services, how should our, what will our customers look like, what kind of services will they expect from our 
products in the future, and they should start thinking about that right now. Mm -hmm. That would be the most uh, the, the best question to ask for them right now. So it's, it's more or less a matter of how to survive this digital transformation that's ongoing, I guess, in, in all sectors and all markets, um, to, to understand what the, how they will position themselves in the future with with this technology. Yeah, we'll see. We, I mean, it, it's about who can be competitive in the future and who won't be in the market. So it's, mm -hmm. I think it's that. And it goes different. Some uh, uh, areas, it doesn't go very fast. Uh, mm -hmm. They say that the building industry in Sweden is the least digitalized business of all. Uh, mm -hmm. But things are happening there now too. So there are the ones who are not uh, jumping on the, on the bandwagon, they won't be there in a couple mm -hmm. of years. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much for that insights. I mean, I think that the, the little bit the purpose of this kind of interviews is also to, to, to look at what kind of challenges there are in the market. When it comes to digitalization, I think you highlighted quite well that uh, it's, it's a matter of understanding how digital technology creates value and competitiveness in, in the long run. Yeah. Now, aside from the challenge of um, not knowing what digitalization is, mm. right, um, uh, these uh, corporate guys, um, what, what other challenges have you, I mean, have you spoken with them? Have you had conversations with them? What other challenges they, uh, they face when, when, when even, you know, uh, before even beginning to think about adopting um, uh, technologies, um, enabling technologies like IoT? What are I the challenges? Do you see? Mm -hmm. There are plenty of challenges, but I, I think one of what a lot of people claim to be a hurdle uh, to start using it. You know, our customers are not used to this. They're not used to paying for this kind of services. Uh, how, how do we get acceptance uh, among our customers uh, to try out this new technology? You have been selling your product, uh, maybe as a one-time fee, and suddenly uh, you will start to paying a monthly fee of that. And, and it's, a, it's a worry about uh, for the executive. How will this affect us? Will the customers accept it? Uh, so I think that is one of the most important issues that you have to uh, address. Mm -hmm. And then again, if you once you get past that and decide, okay, we'd like to go ahead with the Internet of Things. We think it's the right thing for us. It's a very complicated area. Mm -hmm. There are so many areas of competence that you have to master. You have to uh, decide on the sensors, what they're going to measure, what kind of actuators are they going to use to affect uh, things. You need gateways to communicate. You need to select how you should communicate. You need a backend. You need software to handle that, uh, handle the, da the data that you collect. You need to make analysis of those data, maybe using machine learning, artificial intelligence to, to make conclu draw conclusions out of that data, and then present that data uh, to the right user group. Mm. And that it requires so many different competences. So I think a challenge you, you should address is also to what should you do yourself and what partner or partners mm. should you have? Uh, and I, I don't think you should try to address all of those areas yourself. So get the right mix that, that fits your company. Uh, I think that that's also an important issue. Excellent. I, I think that was- Any, any of them? Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, but I think that was a brilliant summary saying that, I mean, how complex this with Internet of Things actually is and how much different competences it needs. Uh, because I, I, I recognize, I mean, in the media, you see um, how it's very simple, simplistic views about Internet of Things, which is not really true. And I think that this is the area where I think you as an expert can really shed light on the real dilemmas and real challenges of this. So thank you very much for that. Fantastic. Any mention um, of um, the integration of cybersecurity and the challenges of cybersecurity with IoT as well? Because they, that, I mean. That is, if you don't build trust in your IoT solution uh, and people don't trust it, it won't last for long. So mm. I think that's, that's, you really have to have a good solid both uh, security, but also robustness in your system mm. so that people mm. can trust it and rely on it. And, and of course, it depends on the application. Some applications like your training uh, watch, for example, it's not that critical if it doesn't work. But if it's something mm. controlling something which really is a matter of life, like uh, uh, self-driving automobiles, uh, autonomous cars, 
uh, then of course it becomes much, much more critical. So, uh, and I think it's, today we see a lot of IoT applications with really, really bad security. Uh, you, we all know of the different uh, attacks that have been made by Mirai and other uh, malwares where products, uh, in that case, IP cameras, which had the uh, uh, people didn't change the the, uh, the uh, user ID and the password. It was the same that was delivered from the factory, and mm -hmm. it's so bad. It's so easy to make products that holds a reasonable level of security and reliability. So what we advise our customers is to look at your application. How critical is it? Uh, what's the effect if it's uh, if it's breached, and how hard, how much effort should you put into? Uh, preventing that because there is a cost to that too so you should balance those two uh, the criticality the risk and also the efforts you do and if you do that properly uh, i think it's possible to be or i'm convinced you can build build uh, i know you can build uh, systems that have the right level of security excellent yeah. we're coming to a little bit to the end of this interview <coughs> and uh, i really much appreciate you sharing your thoughts here if you would give three general advice to an executive or to a manager who are thinking about implementing IoT, what, what would you say to them? I would start at looking at, uh, uh, think about your customers. Uh, what will they look like in a couple of years time? Mm. What kind of services would they like? Uh, think about the business value you can create you, with your organization for them. And then once you know that, uh, start by trying out uh, building an IoT solution. The first steps maybe to you have you have the goal, but start with doing that. Select your partners that you use for doing that because it takes time for your organization to learn this. It takes time for your customers to learn how to use it. So start right now. Digitalization is happening right now. Don't wait. Mm. So think about the business value you like to create, uh, select the partners, uh that you like to work with and start now those are my three advice thank you so much i mean i, I really like this about having patience but still being urgent to get the right solution out there uh anything else you want to add about uh, yourself or uh, the iot business or anything that you think is what we missed or we should have talked about not really, but I, I'm really happy to be part of the Beehive expert panel. I think that's a really, uh, it's a good channel for meeting or, or opportunity to meet experts within very many different areas. Uh, so it's a very good uh, uh, meeting place and meeting those experts. So thank you for being part thank of Thank you that. so much. Thank you so much for joining. And hopefully we'll get the other experts here as well with interviews. Uh, so I want to thank you so much for participating and uh, wish you a pleasant day. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anders.